and welcome to Coffee with Phil, where our goal is to help you live a life of purpose on purpose. We believe that we each become wiser through the people we meet and the stories we hear. So today, we want to connect you with someone new. To help you find the wisdom in today's story, here's your podcast host, Phil Strong. Well, good day and welcome. Welcome to Coffee with Phil. Uh, it's great to have you with me today. I'm, uh, I'm enjoying my coffee. I hope you're enjoying yours. And uh, wherever you are in the world listening, uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, today's interview has taken me a little more effort than I would normally hope to have uh, to get to you. I have had technology crisis. I have had internet crisis. I have had, uh, you know, when you do a whole lot of work and it doesn't get saved, I've had that kind of crisis. So I'm, I'm, I'm struggling. But I've really wanted to persevere to get this interview out to you. Because what my guest today is going to share with you is really, really encouraging. And I hope that whether you're someone who's struggling through a season in life, or whether you're someone who helps others as they struggle, or whether uh, you're just looking for some encouragement, that today you find the gold in this interview. Mary and I, Mary Wanho and I, are chatting about her life, how she started out lost, she became Scary Mary, And then she transitioned out of that and the pressures that she faced helped her to grow stronger in order to succeed in the next season of life. And I really hope you hear that. You'll hear why I call her Scary Mary, as did many others. You'll hear about her personal challenges and you'll hear testimonies of others who have journeyed. And ultimately, I guess... My biggest takeaway from this, and I hope you hear it because I'm repeating it several times in the interview, the biggest takeaway that I heard from Mary was she said, look, we don't force someone into being who we think they should be. We just journey with them to help uncover and discover the gold that is already in them. And she said, when people know you're looking for the gold in their life, They don't mind if you remove the dirt. I love that. That's so good uh, when she said that. And so, look, I've uh, I've had the privilege of listening to this interview several times because I've I've had to edit it several times. Uh, It's my crisis, not yours. Uh, But the gift to you is Mary and her stories and her life, living life wide open. Enjoy this interview with Mary Wanhull. So I'm really excited to have, have Mary with me today. Mary uh, is uh, someone that's got a really interesting story, and I'm, I'm just super excited for you guys to get into it. So I'm going to just say, g'day, Mary. Welcome to the call. How you doing? Yeah, it's great. It's great to have you online. We're, we're, uh, you listeners won't know this, but we're doing a video call today. So Mary and I get to hang out. Um, and man, it's been ages since I saw you guys last. Like, mm. but, So I think maybe we met 2011, somewhere? Yeah, around. quite a way back, yeah. Yeah, we yep. met in an office in Hamilton and drank too much yep. coffee. And, and and you drew on a napkin, and I'm still pretty sure I have that napkin. Oh, and I've man. used it since. Oh, yep. my goodness. You know, so, so we met, we were doing some planning. We came up with some ideas. They were, we were on a napkin at one stage, like for your, <laughs> for your ministry, your, your youth, youth group that you run. And, then, and now, you know, it's expanded. So I want to go on that journey today. But um, oh. Mary, you, you're married to Joel? Yes. Yeah, how long yep. have you guys been married now? Um, over 10 years now. So cool. Yep. Cool. Excellent. And you're living currently in the Bay of Plenty? Yes, out at a um, place called Pongakawa. Yep. Pongakawa. Excellent. Yep. What a wonderful little uh, place. No one will know where that is, but they can Google it. It should be, <laughs> on, it should be on Google Maps. Um, so, so, Mary, you and I chatted. I've got a couple of questions prepared because you've got a really interesting uh, bunch of stories. Um, but I thought to start with, you know, when I first discovered who you were before you knew me, I knew you. You were flying around in the air doing a whole bunch of crazy things. That was a, <laughs> I mean, you must feel like that was a lifetime ago. Mm. But when I first encountered Mary, you were called Scary Mary. Mm. And, and I want you to tell us why you were called Scary Mary. So 
I'm not, I'm not like a scary person. Um, if you see me, you wouldn't be scared of me. No. I'm quite a nice person. Yeah. Um, but um, no, so it, it kind of, I guess it, it come about from what I would do on my dirt bikes. So it was a little bit scary, um, the stuff I'd done riding my dirt bike. And yeah, so that, that's how that name come about. So put it into context, you are, you're a young female. I don't, I don't know how old you were when you started doing those tricks, maybe. Um, I can't even remember myself. I was nah. in my early 20s when I went, I started motocross racing and yeah, in my early 20s. Yeah, so you're a young female, but you're motocross racing. And on top of that, you're doing stunt jumps mm. and tricks. Mm. What, 20 metres in the air, 10 metres in the air, something stupid. Yeah, yeah. So... Yeah, so um, it kind of, I guess, and to kind of backtrack it um, to how I got to doing that was um, was definitely around um, as a young person, as a teenager, I shifted multiple times. We shifted, our family shifted multiple times. We were um, brought up on a farm, so in the outdoors and yeah, and I, I had two brother, two older brothers, and they're like, "You're such a girl. Don't be such a girl. Harden up." And um, so, so one day I was only like, I was 14 years old, so I wasn't too young. I thought, oh, I'll give these bikes a go because they had dirt bikes. And so I jumped on the dirt bikes and just just kind of really took to it. And I think from that moving around, it was always really hard to find a sense of belonging. Um, you know, in school and in that environment. And as a teenager, that's just such a core, core thing to you to find that space, that place. And so for me, it, um, yeah, I really found that in dirt bikes. It um, gave me confidence. I took to it quite well. Also, a group that I was hanging out with at uh, the church, like it was a church youth group, and there was a bunch of them that went to dirt bikes. So that really propelled me into it as well. And that place of just being a part of a group of people. So that actually wasn't like I set out to be the craziest rider or anything. It, it, it was actually the people that, that drew me into it. That's awesome. So you're, you find out that you, you can give it a go. You turn out to be good at it. And, and then I suppose as your confidence grew, you just started doing what the others were doing. And if they're doing yeah. jumps, you're doing jumps. I always compare myself with the guys. Like I never kind of, I, I don't see this thing. I don't say we're equal. We're very different. And I have no issues with our differences. But but for some reason, I, I just, having two older brothers, I was just always trying to keep up with them. And I think it it created quite, well, it, it started a really competitiveness in me. And I, I am actually really competitive, but very competitive always with the guys because that's a higher benchmark to aim for, right? Yeah, sure. But especially within this sport, so. Mm. So you tr did you travel like overseas when you ended up racing? So yeah, I did. Um, I did a lot of seasons in Australia, and yeah, um, racing. And I missed out on the Australian Championship by one point. That was about oh. <laughs> 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 It got multiple New Zealand championships with the motocross racing. And I, but I actually, it's nearly like I needed a new challenge. So I took to the freestyle motocross, which is the stunt riding and the big jumps and got the world record, female world record for the biggest jump and still hold that. And yeah, and that did take me to America. Um, and later on, I did travel the world a bit more judging the Rebel X fighters. So that's the, the top, top, the guys um, series, the World Series of Freestyle Motocross. So, that so you went from area. racing bikes around tracks, you were looking for a new challenge. So mm -hmm. you're like, well, let's just get into supercross tricks, um, mm -hmm. big ramps. Mm -hmm. and, and then you, you end up holding the world record for mm -hmm. the biggest jump for a female. Mm -hmm. And you still hold that record today. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and I was, I was the first female to kind of, I guess, pave the way in the sport as a first female to actually do the sport. It was looked at that girls couldn't do it, and I liked proving that, you know, mindset wrong. 
Yeah, okay. there's something about you, Mira. I think we'll hear it with the other stories. Is you definitely like uh, you've got that edge about you. You're competitive. I can I can see that. But you apply that to not just to be a winning, but to succeed at what you feel mm. the challenges that's in front of you. Definitely. And I yeah. suspect you're one of those ones that you're hardest on yourself. Yeah. Uh, because <laughs> like you really want to push to to achieve mm. something for yourself. Yeah, definitely. And you're always trying to beat yourself. You, you, like I use, I guess, comparison, I think in a positive way as in seeing what is possible, but definitely it's about me and, and what I'm doing and not um, comparing, yeah, with others in that kind of way, yeah. Yeah, I think that's really cool because, you know, as I said to you before we started the call, um, what I love doing is finding out these stories that people have been uh, on their journey, but but what's the gold that others can can get? And so I like reflecting. I just hear you say, you know, you were successful at racing, but you use that as a platform, almost like a step up to the Definitely. next challenge. Yeah. Your, your next level was, well, bigger ramp, bigger yeah. jump. <laughs> bigger, <know>? bike. <laughs> bigger bike. Bigger um, bike. I think I saw you post a photo on Facebook in the last month where it was always like, this was the first time I hit this big yeah. ramp. And <laughs> Yeah, the camera angle helped, but man, you look like you're in the Definitely. clouds. Yeah, it was. Like, because I found that photo, I was like, whoa, oh man, that was crazy. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. Maybe that's why they called you Scary Mary. Cause, yeah. Because uh, everyone else on the ground was scared about what, what you were doing. <laughs> yeah, the outcome, yeah. <laughs> yeah, outcome. And, and uh, you've probably had a few things go not so well for you uh, yeah. with uh, landings or tricks. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, it's all in the takeoff to whether or not that landing uh, comes comes true. <laughs> that's, actually, that's a really good life principle. To be honest, we could we yep. could dive deep on that because um, yeah, the, the the takeoff determines determines the journey and the landing. That's really good. So that's Definitely. a good goal for someone to tuck away. Uh, yes, from Mary. So that's awesome. Um, are you the sort of person that collects X rays and counts numbers of screws and joints and and mm. stuff like that? No, not really. Uh, yeah, I don't get too worried about it. I have a stack of metal, um, yeah, and a pile of, of screws and, and whatnot. And there's definitely a fair bit in my ankle, one of my legs and ankle still. But yeah. I don't know. I've lost count of the bones that I've broken. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> I don't want to put people off. Um, I, I am, though. Like I've, I have, uh, I learn by doing. So I'm not someone that figures it out before I do it. I throw myself into these situations and then figure it out. Yes. So, but that got the bit of me on a dirt bike quite often. Yeah. But, well, obviously it's yeah. a little more risky than, yeah. you know, taking risks with jigsaw puzzles. Yeah. Or, uh, Something. And we, we didn't actually have foam pits when I was doing it back then either. So now they've got a lot more safety foam pits, airbags. We actually had none of that. It was just trial and error. Um, but I think one of my strong points is that resilience to bounce back and to not be defeated. Although some would say it's a weakness, but at the same time, but definitely it took me to where I went. There. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. you know, like we said, you're competitive against your challenge that you've yeah. set yourself. Definitely. And that, that brings with it resilience. Mm. Um, so, yeah, just so, so much gold in that. Thanks, Mary. You know, like just what you're, what, what's the biggest thing you think you've learned personally from that season of life? You know, with the, the racing, you then did the tricks, then you went and became a judge, you know, in mm -hmm. the US. Mm. What, what do you reckon you took away from that? I think, I think my biggest learning was, was actually, you can you can try, you can do all these things, you can gain all these things, success, money, fame, um, whatever it is. And when you get there, you're still there. Like you as a person, you're still there and you've still got you. And I think though often people strive for this thinking that it'll change when they get there. Uh, yeah, the external stuff changes, but the internal stuff, it, it doesn't so much. Like you're still there. And, and that my biggest takeaway was is actually learning to belong to me and not 
what others, not relying on what others think of me to be okay with me. Because there was that sense of, in my early years of teenage, being a teenager and that rejection and, and because that's something that's actually really important to me is, is connection and, and belonging. And so, but, but yeah, knowing that, you know, when, even when you've got fame or people, you know, and success, it doesn't actually change that sense of your own sense of belonging to you. Yeah. And that, that is, yeah. So that was a biggie um, to take away. And it nearly makes it harder when people see you as someone, like they see me as Scary Mary, whereas, and, and they had a picture, they formed this picture and they nearly put you in a box and it's like, you've got to really, was like, um, and sometimes that, that can, then you try to live up to that or you try to be that when it's not actually you. And, and that is quite a lot of identity kind of crisis within it, to be honest, that kind of journey. But um, definitely the takeaway is, is just becoming more and more okay with me and not what others think of me, but yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I always say to people, you know, success doesn't make you, it reveals yeah. you. You yeah, know, definitely. <laughs> so you're bringing yourself to the platform, in your case, the podium. Um, mm. And you better like who you are before you get there. Ex- yeah. Because it's, it's going to be you that turns up. And, exactly. Uh, and yeah. and I, I love your encouragement. And I guess you spend a lot of time encouraging young people in that area. We'll talk about yeah. that soon. But, but we can't get our identity from the medals or the podium. Mm. We've mm-hmm. got to really oh. learn to love ourselves and be a better better me mm. regardless of where I, I end up in my journey. Mm, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man, that's cool. So you 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 say you've you've got some resilience, uh, you've learned to understand who you are. And then okay, so you, I think when I met you, um, you first came and you spoke, we got you to speak at a conference, you and Joel mm. turned up mm. to put some dirt bikes up on stands and and um, mm. that's when I just realized you're yeah, just such a cool, you know, you and Joel, man, you're just so naturally relaxed. You're, you're people focused, but your, your, your integrity and your authenticity is you just bring who you are. Mm. 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 And that's that's our motto, live life wide open. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Well, that's a, it's it's that's bring a, who you are, just be you. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's so cool. Obviously the reference to keeping your throttle wide open as well. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah. But being real and being true to who you mm. are. Um, you've had um, a few challenges along the way um, to mm. where you are today. Um, I don't know yeah. how much you want to speak about that, but um, you, your resilience that you learned in one season has ended up being what helps you in another season. Mm. Yeah, do you, want to talk, do you want to talk a bit about that? We, we emailed yeah. about it. Yeah, so um, I... I was I was 32, I think I was 32 years old. I can't remember what year, but it was about five, six, maybe six years ago now. Yeah. Um, and I was, um, oh, I was feeling pretty crappy for quite some time and doctors couldn't figure it out and they just kind of like, oh, you, you might be depressed, you might be, you know, this or that or... Anyway, it turns out that I had cancer, Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer. I had a tumor the size of a football in under my chest that was actually suffocating me to death um wow. and yeah it was it was i my oncologist doctor told me afterwards how serious it actually was when um first met me um when i first when they first diagnosed it so that was yeah definitely it was a life-changing journey that was actually pretty, <laughs> it's, it sounds like it was pretty incredible. Um, yeah, pretty incredible time. Um, but also at the time, I, as, as I got diagnosed, my mum was actually fighting secondary breast cancer. And then a week after my first treatment, she passed away from it. So it was like, Wow. That's a tough season, man. <laughs> mm, mm. And then uh, just to add to it, last year, yes, last year, early last year, my husband got diagnosed with cancer <laughs> in the, in, at a similar age, um, in, in his early 30s. So, Whoa. yeah, so now we've, we've had a good dose of it. Um, 
but hey, we've conquered, we've won, we've come out the other side. And yeah, just know that, yeah, there's, like I guess it, it's brought so much more appreciation to life for sure. Yeah. Um, I think though, but not that I'm the greatest at it, I think like a big learning and something that like, mm, I feel like, and I know Joel did as well, went through um, similar, a freedom. We actually gained a freedom from that season, the learning in it. That? So, that's, that's a really um, important thought. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's, and I think it's especially, especially um, as a Christian, faith-based, um, there's a sense of, and I think in our upbringing, we're often taught like, religion says perform you know there's there's a lot of performance within it do the right thing be the right and you know I'd spent for about four or five years up till then like building a ministry youth encounter but that same kind of sense for being good enough and part of that belonging was had just crept was just such a big part of it that definitely drove and yeah drove me to work too hard overperform I guess in a sense and God just really took me on just such a journey of just being able to sit with him and just encounter his love to the next level and I just was able to let go of so much and become so much more okay with me because you, yeah, like uh, nine months of treatment, yeah. and you just you just sit, you just spend days just sitting, just chilling, and it was pretty cool. And no expectations, expectations, of course. Um, you know, you just fighting for survival, so you don't you know expectations go, and it's 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 actually quite gold. <laughs> so 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 when you say um, you you and Joel both experience freedom, what you're really saying is your your having to face this challenge of cancer has actually shifted expectations away, um, mm. which, which provides you a lot more freedom with how you Definitely. view life yourself. But it's a continual battle still, and it's good to be reminded and talk about it. Like I do love talking about it because it reminds me of that because it it is, I think, so to do things, yeah, because you start to operate not out of that place of like I'm doing that because that's my identity to to prove myself, but it's more because of whom I because of who I am, I can now do all this stuff. Right. And you know, live live life, you know, and the live life wide open, live this free and abundant life and do great things. But then of course, you know, when the hurdles come and or um failure mistakes um it doesn't compound on you so much because it's not who you are you're just on this journey of of living and yeah exploring and so yeah so definitely um took that kind of performance mentality like we we go for excellence not perfection you know like we want to still do excellence in whatever we do but we don't have, doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah. So, yeah. So no, it was, yeah. It, it, That's it's amazing, amazing, you know, and I think if we could just speaking to those people that are listening that, you know, maybe have got challenges in their life right now, or they've got family that are going mm. through challenges, you know, like um, when, when you watched a loved one go through something, all of a sudden your hopes or your expectations might be shifted. But I think often we, we look at it with such a limited paradigm we don't find like the upside, which is mm. what I'm hearing you say. And of course now yeah. it's hindsight. You you know, you see yeah, yeah. you knocked it over, you've come out. But I want people to really understand from what you're sharing is that if we look at our challenges with what can I learn, how can I grow, or what's the what's the what's the gold inside the rainbow, you know, the rainbow mm. inside the storm, mm. then they can really overcome. I think without, I, I believe that we need resistance to move forward. 
like a, you know, it can either stop us and take us back, of course, but I, I do believe that resistance, like, um, <clears throat> say in, in a sport and in my sport, you, if I, if I was just like, if I had the mentality, oh yeah, I'm the first girl doing this and, and I did, you know, just a little bit and I, then I'd just be like, oh, um, I've become, I guess, satisfied in a sense, like uh, I wouldn't push any further. I'd be like, oh, I've, I've succeeded. But it doesn't, because um, I do believe our potential is limitless. It's only the limitations that we put on it. Yeah. That, that puts limits on it. So, uh, but yeah, so, so that resistance, it can either, we can either be squashed down by it and give up and become a victim to it, or I believe it can repel us into our potential, into our destiny, into our future in such an incredible way. Uh, yeah, that's kind of what I've learned and what I've seen on it and what has happened. That's brilliant. And, and I just really hope that's that it's super encouraging for people listening, that mm. when they're coming up against obstacles, mm. tests or challenges, mm. that they think of it, in, in your words, as mm. resistance that makes us stronger yeah, and propels us word. forward. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and so whoever's out there listening, whatever challenges they're, they're facing, be encouraged. You know, mm. uh, it'll make you stronger and it's making you stronger for a reason because it's now Definitely. able to propel you into something that you've been prepared for. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Take you to a new level um, of blessing and favour. Um, yeah, because favour favor is hard to carry, hard to handle. <laughs> so okay. we need that strength. Well, now, you're opening up a, now you're opening up some more <laughs> wisdom. So... So um, don't you lose that. Um, so resistance is, uh, or opposition is helping to build resistance, which makes us stronger. It propels us into the next season, which you're calling favor. Mm. But now you're telling me when you do have success or favor, it's not easy to carry. Mm. Is that what no, you're saying? No, it can break you. It can easy break you. <laughs> okay. So, so again, let's not make the podium uh, all about our identity, but but what who mm. we are in that journey. Mm. Okay, from your experience, because you've been a successful athlete, you're succeeding in life. I, I love what you guys achieve, but what are the risks of success that you would call out for people? That you would say, okay, young person, you're really awesome at that, but watch out, there's a risk. What are those risks of success or favour? Um, well, I think I think. Big risk is that you become reliant on yourself. And when you become just reliant on yourself, you can only go so far. Wow. Uh, you need to, yeah, gather people around you and uh, that to move forward and to go to the next level, it takes more than just yourself. And we're not meant to do it alone. So I think, yeah, that can be when we claim that success for just us. That can definitely be a huge risk. Yeah, Limits right. us. Okay, so one <laughs> of the risks is self-dependence. What, what would be another risk that you could think of? Um, I, yeah, like definitely burnout, health. Yeah. <laughs> that which is a huge one that is today and, and mental health can, yeah, what we think we want can often, yeah, be, be the totally thing that will harm us. Yeah. So, right. yeah, but definitely um, that health is, is a biggie. As, yeah, yeah. Because you you talked before about you know when you weren't well. I think you mm. said crappy. Um, you know, one of the mm. risks was that you could have been depressed or burned out because you were just working so hard. Mm. You know, because yep. that dependence on self, that self sustaining, yep. yep. and then ultimately, I guess through your challenges, you've found freedom from that. 
you've uh, found new strength from the re from the resistance and opposition you faced, but mm. you're you've come out the other side, and now you're saying it's not about just me; it's about those that are with me, mm. and and how we do this together in community. Definitely, right. yeah. Well, now yeah. let's talk about Youth Encounter because I know it's just mm. a huge passion for you and Joel. Um, can you just quickly, for the listeners, just say what is Youth Encounter? What is it? How does it work? And then we'll mm. jump into some th questions. Cool. So, yeah, so Youth Encounter, we, Youth Encounter Ministries Trust, we're a charitable organization. And we pretty much, we exist to create a community, a place for young people and older people, but primary young people to come into and just feel a sense of belonging in themselves, a sense of value of who they are. And because when you feel that sense of belonging and okay with you, then you can start encountering your potential. So, yeah, we just want to pull them into that space to then just really empower them in their journey to to live that incredible life that we believe we've been created for and our God-given potential. So the way we do that is, is through extreme sporting activities. <laughs> awesome. So dirt bike riding, of course, yeah. which is a big part of my life, but also a big part of Joel and my life is, um, well, mainly Joel, Joel's a surfer, so and I've taken that up now. And so surfing, um, wakeboarding, mountain biking. So, yeah, just getting active, but in, I guess, a more risk-taking activities uh yeah we we have a lot of safety around it of course and systems in place and we audited on all of that but yeah we we can see the power in that wanting to explore and push the boundaries and then channeling that yeah channeling that strength or that that people have to propel them forward and yeah, there's definitely can be challenging, some challenges in it, especially when you have an injury. <laughs> but uh, my mum always said broken bones build character. <laughs> well, you've proven that in your life, I'm sure. Mm. So yeah, so but, but first and foremost, it's just this real strong community. Our faith is an important component of it and our activities that we use. And through experiential learning therapy, so I've, I've built, um, created, uh, I think it's potentially, as far as I know, I haven't uh, from my research found anyone else in the world that does this, but uh, dirt bike therapy, which is a strong cognitive behavioural therapy, working with quite high at-risk youth, bringing yeah. them through that, into mentoring, into camps, into our community gatherings, leadership, uh, volu volunteering back in, to the organization mahi and to and yeah integrating them into the workplace yeah so you're you're basically <laughs> creating an environment where young people can be uh, outside their comfort zone mm -hmm. or, uh, they could be put into an extreme environment be it um dirt bikes mountain bikes surfing wakeboarding or something else mm -hmm. but I, i'm hearing you saying that you're creating opportunities for them to experience resistance which helps them to become stronger but also to discover mm. who they are definitely definitely and it is uh first and foremost is is that belonging that pulling them in connecting without any agenda to change them i think that's one of our most powerful things is, is we're not coming at them with you need to be different. And I mean, like we're, we're talking and working with um, youth that are just coming through youth justice that are coming out of lock up, um, being in jail. And, but we do, we work with the right range. So we've got from that end of the spectrum through to our youth, uh, yeah, that are really on track and doing really well in life. And, and then merging them together the right ratios to to as well impact each other but just in that like you said that environment so first to get an environment you've got to create an atmosphere so it's that atmosphere of just real acceptance um, wow. 
I, I just like I'm reflecting like I don't know if you've reflected on your story because as I'm hearing it Mary I'm hearing you basically creating positive opportunity for those but it was based on what you experienced as a teenager because you Definitely. said right at the beginning I hope the listeners catch this you struggled as a young teenager with a feeling of belonging and acceptance mm. because of just the way your family moved around and mm. and now here we are 20 plus years later you're doing something really positive for that experience. You're mm. creating an atmosphere of acceptance for people, at risk people to come into, mm. so that they can build that self acceptance that's necessary mm. for life. Definitely. Oh, and goodness. you know, I was, I was a school, I graduated school early, quite early. I dropped out. <laughs> I was a school dropout. Um, and yeah, it wasn't my strong point, my education. And like I, I remember hearing, I might not have been told the exact words, but I remember hearing, you'll amount to nothing. You, you know, you, um, because I didn't fit that education system, either that school system, more practical in nature, um, brought up on the farm and yeah, just wanted to adventure and explore. And I find that in that space of being active is actually where I have my best reflection. It's where I find myself the most. So, and I like really believe that our education system, I think they work on it, like, and they try do other things. So I'm not like totally negative, but it's definitely a mold to fit. And when you don't fit it, you know, that rejection. So yeah. And then and then you want to take risky behaviors because you're trying to find yourself, improve yourself. And I'm glad I didn't find drugs and you know, kind of go down that track so much. But I found these sports, I found the space to yeah, to, to test the boundaries and to push myself and find, yeah, find myself in that. But yeah, exactly. That's your through. phrase. You found yourself. So you actually got mm. to discover who mm. you are and, oh, usually. and and I just love it Mira. I just want to keep repeating this so that the listeners get it that the importance of feeling like you belong you yeah, know? Huge. And that's, that you said at the beginning that's what was important to you now mm. you're creating a safe place where kids can come out of lock up or they can come out of um, perhaps a, 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 a run-in with the law that they can feel like they belong Mm. once they feel like they belong without you not need to change them they can discover what they need mm. for themselves definitely and it is like across the board like it's kind of space that kids from such diversity can actually come together and they don't really you wouldn't know the difference because yeah. it's about the core cool, like and it's not about changing people it's about uncovering them it's about discovering them themselves and so we call it unleashing and releasing that potential and I think because I love it I've also been exploring that you know the gold finding the gold when people know you're going after the gold they don't mind you removing a bit of dirt right because you've got to uh, remove wait, a bit wait, of dirt stop, to find stop, the gold stop 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 <laughs> say that again when people feel like you're, 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 you're looking for gold when, right. when they know you're looking for gold in them then they won't mind you removing some of the dirt that's Come covering on. It up. that's a word right there that is so cool awesome correct so so you've got these people you're looking for the gold in them they don't mind you mm. clearing away the dirt mm. oh my mm. goodness so so what give me an example like without using names something mm. that happened recently that just immediately comes to mind for you mm. so um one of our one of our young guys he two years ago he engaged in our therapy program through the alternative education he um drugs alcohol he's 13 years old and yeah so just skipping wagging school not not being there um pretty rough home environment and was just yeah going down that track um just yeah high at school and 
Oh, hey, well, don't you love technology? So what happened when I was talking with Mary is the inter internet at her end just completely died. And uh, it took me a while to get back with her, uh, to connect for the interview. And we were telling a story just now, but she shifted and I, I, I was recording and I, I didn't want to lose what she, was, what she was sharing. So we're going to pick it up shortly and you'll hear Mary talking about... Uh, about how that she just loves working with people, and then I promise you, she transitions back into the story that she started to tell us. So let's get back into the interview with Mary Wanhill. Like you see that, you know, you see the potential, and you see the goal. Yeah. Um, but you, it is really trusting because you've got to let God take them on the journey that they need to go on. Fully. And you've got to meet them at where they're at and not try just put on you know like where oh, you're at true. because it's about a story a journey a a growth like a learning yeah so yeah. and and i think that's the biggest thing with especially like our at risk um you know, say at risk, um, in risk, <laughs> off the deep end, young people. Um, it's when we come, how to put it like, and I can lead into <laughs> that impact from it. But um, we're, we, like from our Christian um, point of view and, and kind of Western culture, you can say Western culture, Christianity, and how we, uh, like we, I think we've got it really mixed together, our Christian beliefs with culture and trying to just pull some of that apart um, to really meet the young people where they're at and the person and really taking and working with the person um, no matter what nationality or where they're from. Yeah, right. I think that is a big challenge and yeah, like part of Youth Encounter and our vision is to enter into that kind of space of meeting young people where they're at, that there's no, we're not putting a certain um, cultural norms on them, um, Christian behaviours, but yeah, just really heading into just captivating their hearts and, and meeting the, and, and that connection to then connect them with God and his heart for them um, and really communicating that through. So, yeah. Mm, I think it's so cool. Like I just hear, and I, I see this, and I'll get you to share a story in a minute, but I just see how you guys are just so fully engaged in connecting with someone because of who they are you know, uh, almost like uh, unlocking the diamond or the gold within them. But then when they recognize that, they realize there's so much more to life. There's so much mm, more absolutely. that, that would, would spark them into who they are. It would um, fulfill them in much greater ways. And all you're really doing is holding up some signs <laughs> and pointing them on the journey, yeah. but, but being willing to walk with them. Definitely, definitely. And a big part of it is, is my journey of uh, when I when I snapped my legs and retired from the freestyle motocross, I went and studied the counselling um, at Bethlehem Tertiary Institute, and it was a real God prompt. Like I felt like God told me to. I always thought I'd go and study theology or you know like to Bible college, but I ended up going down that track and I totally can see why because it is about unpacking like what are what are we believing about ourselves because those incorrect what are we believing about ourselves and believing about God because really something happens and then we get the consequences it's not whatever happened that is why we respond it's what we believe about ourselves and about God and others of why we respond the way we respond. So a big part of Youth Encounter is working in that belief system of what people are believing about themselves and they're not seeing the gold. And, and as well, my own journey, <laughs> I'm continually yeah. as well, having to journey that, like 
what am I believing about myself and how God sees me. Yeah. Uh, and when I can apply that and, and keep moving forward, it's incredible. It's our potential is just so absolutely. Wonderful. Hey, and like, let's segue there because um, literally last time we chatted, we just totally lost internet and, and either <laughs> you or me, we just dropped off the world. I don't know what happened, but so this is part two for the listeners. I've uh, got Mary back. I'm so excited that you started to tell a story and, and mm. so we'll start at the beginning, young kid comes in. I want the listeners to hear just this story because it's so powerful. Yeah. So, so we had one of our, uh, a young guy that, he was being kicked out of mainstream high school and because of his behaviours, 13 years old and hooked on drugs, um, sneaking out of home, dysfunctional uh, family situation. Dad hasn't been on the scene since he was a young boy. And yeah, so he's heading out drinking alcohol, smoking and wagon school and, and just, yeah, heading off track, um, basically. So the alternative education, we work with a number of alternative education and they, we work with, they will give us a group of uh, usually four to seven young people at a time. And so this particular young man in this group coming along and he yeah he really he just started to engage in it and it was about halfway through um the course which is an eight week therapy course based on cognitive behavioral therapy and really just looking at what they're believing in their thoughts the thoughts that they're thinking to then what comes out in the behaviors so we had two years now since then um and he has he has now come to so we finished finished the course the therapy course then we linked him in with our camps so he started coming along and just really mixing in with other youth on our camps we will put approximately five youth at risk youth that have come through the therapy and we provide the bikes and gear because they don't have the means for that and then you have the other 25 or so young people on the camp that have bought their own bikes and gear. And yeah, they're 70% not from, at least 70% not faith background. So yeah, an awesome opportunity, but we bring them in together and, and just, so he started journey and he come to a camp and then we linked him in on a camp with one of our amazing mentors uh, and who has been mentoring him, regular catch ups, linked them in with our local youth group. And yeah, just really seeing this young person just grow, just really grow on themselves and start to change how, what they thought about themselves. And the big thing that, the big thing when I asked them just recently of what, what was it that captured you in? And their, their answer was, is that they realized that we, we weren't judging we weren't judging him. We weren't um, putting anything on him or expecting him to be any different, just meeting him where he was at. And yeah, he just felt so safe, just just safe, like he belonged. He didn't belong at, feel like he belonged at school, still struggles with that. And still, uh, yeah, just doesn't feel that school is a safe place, like a lot of our young people. But coming into our encounter community, now he is part of, yeah, just such a strong part of the community on the weekends. It's encounter people of a wide variety of ages um, spread. It's, it's hanging out. And last week where I seen some pictures, they were all a bunch of encounter young people that have met through encounter and, and they were roller skating. They were at the roller skating place. <laughs> but um. Yeah, so now this young person is, he's 15 now, and he has been coming out and actually doing work experience with us, and on the, we call it our encounter mahi journey, nice. so taking them into becoming work ready, and yeah, just isn't, uh, doesn't 
totally thoroughly enjoy school practical we'll see you know practicalities and you know kind of hands-on kind of work so yeah just able to just keep journeying with and this is what yeah we really we with our young people is is just give them that place where they feel like they can they fit in without changing themselves or being anything anyone different wow and this young man is yep off you know no drugs off alcohol not heading down their pathway and yeah just growing in himself and the exciting part is 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 growing in his understanding of who god is oh, wow. and experiencing god um and yeah just really in this environment able to explore and keep keep moving forward yeah, and that's such an awesome story, eh? And I think, because I remember back when we spoke last time, you know, uh, in the first part of the call, you were saying that your your journey began in a place where you really struggled to belong and you, mm. you didn't have connection. And and often, well, what I hear from this guy and probably a lot of the ones that you work with that are in risk, at risk situations, that they just don't feel like they belong. Mm. But I just want the yeah. listeners to grab that key thing that you've said so many times is that we don't tell them what they're supposed to do. We don't mm. try and change them. But what you're actually doing is trying to reveal the greatness that's within them. Absolutely, what's already in them, eh? That's Definitely. really so true. And I just wanted everyone to make sure they got that. If that's the only takeaway they get out of all your cool stories, is that the people that they meet, the ones that they maybe would be helping, don't change them for goodness sake. Don't try and force them into a box of your expectations, but actually allow them to, to discover who they are, who they're created mm. to be, and then to shine like that. Mm. Mm. Absolutely. That's so good. Mary, I just, I, I, I think we've, we've got so much for people to hear. So thanks so much for connecting with us. Um, I'm gonna make sure that I put the Youth Encounter website and Facebook on the, on the blog post. Um, awesome. So that the listeners can grab it, they can go and see some photos. Um, they can, you know, see the website and connect and support with if they would need to. But it's just, it's just really awesome for people to hear that there are people like you and Joel and your whole team that are just mm -hmm. rolling up your sleeves and helping young people in our nation. And so I just mm -hmm. want to say thanks. I think you're a huge inspiration and I've really enjoyed catching up with you. Well, I appreciate it, Phil. And yeah, it, it, I learn and grow even through, you know, through our conversation and every time I, I talk through this. Um, yeah, it's it really is incredible and such a blessing and a privilege. I feel in a really privileged place to be doing what I'm doing. Yeah, it's so good.